before we begin, let's kind of have a look on the application that we are going to be working on. So this is a simple tax application, more like a to-do application. And I'm just going to put down the first tax. And you can see, you don't even have to refresh the application. Automatically, it's going to insert that. You can put the second, you can put as many tax as you want. I can put the third one, and I can put the fourth one. So right here, maybe I don't want uh, the fourth one, just like I didn't uh, type it correctly. I can just delete it and you can see automatically when we hover this, we kind of get another CSS effect and I can double, double click that. And that is going to stick with that tax I double click to show that I'm already done with that tax. So that's how we can show that we are already done with the tax. And we can uh, delete tax just like we did. We can add more tax. I'm just going to add one more tag, let's say the six tags. And automatically it's going to add. And if you can observe, we sorted this uh, with the media MongoDB implementation and uh, the support for the MongoDB. You can use Mongoose. If you're a very good fan of MongoDB, you can use Mongoose. It's a MongoDB application. And everything is going to be uh, so smooth and so cool. So right away, let's get started. Enough of the introduction. To install Meteor is very simple. All you just simply have to do is to run Meteor Create, then you add the flag you want to use, then the name of the application. Even if we add the flag, it's going to create a default React application for us. But I want to use a React application with a TypeScript functionality. That's why I added this TypeScript flag. And once you do that, all you just have to do is to run yarn start or npm start and it's going to start the application for us. So automatically I've done that, and uh, you can see right here, we have our local host 3000 on our, and, uh, sorry, on our command line CLI, and you can see the application is coming from our project directory. So right away, let me go ahead and open the project folder. And over here, I've opened it, so I installed a bootstrap. You can always install React Bootstrap from uh, React Bootstrap official docs. I'm not going to go through that, but you can see the dependency over here. And I kind of brought in some things that we are going to be working with and declare just an array of objects with ID and title, more like a MongoDB structure. So that is uh, the much I did right now. So right away, let's go ahead and uh, start. I'm going to wrap everything in a container. So I'm just going to even make use of the auto suggestions because I don't really want us to wait, waste more time, but everything is going to be explainable and understandable. Then over here we have, we can use a div, but let me just use a met. We can define our own custom container, give it a flex. Then inside the flex, I want every item to be justified. Justify the content to flex end. And then we want it to uh, go vertically, that is flex column. So inside there, we are going to bring in our header component, which I have also created, but nothing inside of it. So let me just go ahead and import that. Import the header from header. So when I save that over in the header, you can see just a normal React component, nothing much. And I also created one more task component to list our tags. So I'm just going to change this to a singular tax. I don't want it to be plural. I'm just going to rename that. Oh, sorry for that. I added a T instead of a period. Oh, one more mistake. Mistakes are good sometimes. And that renames it. I'm back in our app.css. We need that. I'm going to bring in what is called the node wrapper. For the CSS, I'm just going to paste that. I don't want us to waste time on the CSS. So I think I have to do that again. Node wrapper. Oh, no. I don't know when you make a mistake with a met. Okay. So we've done that. And I'm going to bring in the list group. So inside the list group, let's give it a class name of list group. 
So I'm using bootstrap default classes. Then inside this list group, I'm going to list out everything that you have seen over here. So why is this header cannot return a JSS? And uh, that's very wrong for us. So I'm just going to return a div. And let me just add a header and save. And that should get rid of that uh, red squiggly line. But over here, I'm just going to use the no DB, no DB tax, right? Yeah. You have to map everything. So I'm going to return the tax component. So for for the map, we have to return the title and as well for the index. And I'm going to, I think I have to wrap everything here inside the div because I don't want us to have that error. Let's just change this to key. And that should solve it. So let's go ahead and save. Header cannot be used as a JSS component, why? What's wrong with our header? And let's go ahead and see. Everything looks properly uh, arranged, so we don't have any issue. Sometimes I don't know why the VS code, okay, the error disappeared. And let's go ahead and pass the title, so I can just pass the title. And uh, back in our tax. Can just declare some interface. Tax props. We have the title to be a string. Then over here, we can use the structuring, but we have to pass the tax props. Then I can grab, grab the title. So over here, you can just pass the title and let's save that and uh, let's kind of see what we have. So we have the first task, second task and so on. So sometimes this VS code uh, kind of delay, this is kind of pissing me off, but let's go ahead. So beneath this uh, list group, I'm going to have an input wrapper have to be very careful because I don't want to repeat words. Then I'm going to bring in the form. Then we have the input group, but let's give it a class name of margin bottom of three. Then inside our input group, we have a form control. Um, these are our text editor or our uh, inputs. Then we're gonna give it a placeholder, enter a tax. Then we have to bring another input group. We have to append to this input group, but append, we are gonna append the button, submit. So this is a type of submit. And that should solve it for us. And let's refresh. So with these components, it's kind of delaying, but you can see right away, we have something that looks properly nice and properly good. So for the CSS, I'm just gonna copy that and paste that. But before we go get over to the CSS, we actually have to start adding some things. So I'm just going to pass the ID. So the ID is going to be Think a string, yeah. Mm, I can just bring it here. I don't think we are gonna make use of that, but let's just keep it in case. So the next thing we have to do right now is to make use of our data from our database because right away you can see we are using a default array which we just declared, which does not uh, really make sense. So media with the ability to use MongoDB, everything in your database, it, it's automatically 
store there. Everything you are uh, interacting with your database is automatically stored in this media folder. So that makes it unique for your application. So what you have to do is to create a collection. The way we can do that is to make use of this API over here. So the server, you can see we, we are going to declare a collection inside this API folder. Then we are going to uh, use this collection that we declared and I make use of it inside of our main.ts file. In our API, I'm going to create a, a file called tax. So it's going to be tax.ts and I'm going to import from media slash mongo. I think I spelled this correctly. Then we can just bring in the mongo. So I'm going to declare an interface called tax props. We have the ID, but I'm just going to make it optional because we're not going to make use of that properly, but we can make use of the string. We can uh, use the created that because it's a date and we can use the completed, but let's just leave it optional for now. And that is a false. So beneath here, I'm just going to export default new mongo dot collection so if you're familiar with mongoose this is not gonna be a problem then we can just pass the name of the collection we want it to be but inside here i want to use the tax props and that should solve it for the tax api so what you have to do is to go over to the server and inside the main.ts file i'm going to clear uh, all these things inside here because we are not using the list collection, links collection, I mean. I'm just going to clear that and delete this. So we want that whenever the app starts, I want to insert into this tax collection, into this tax collection I just created from this API. So if you're not understanding what I'm doing, what we can just simply do is to come over to our app.ts so all I just have to do, there is a way we can list everything that is in our task collection. But before then, we have to restart our application so that we can uh, create that task collection. So when our application restarts, we can be able to use it, but right away we can still have access to it here. So there is something called the use tracker from media so that's how we can actually make use of that so i just have to use the structuring and import for media slash react media data so inside here we can bring in the use tracker so in case this gives us a warning all you just have to do is to install the tracker and then you can still make use of it. So the tracker is specific to your application. So beneath here, you can just simply do DB tax because that the other one is no DB tax. So let me just say load data from DB. We can use the tracker. Then the tracker is going to track from our API using a callback. We want to track. Uh, tax so we can just import that immediately and find if you're familiar with mongo this is how you can actually do it and now uh, then at the end we can just fetch everything and you can even pass uh, parameters like sort so let's just go ahead and try that you can just quickly sort then we can pass uh, the created art because i want it to sort by dates then we can pass it to negative one to use the latest one that we just inserted. So that will solve it for our uh, getting data. Then we can even console.log this so that we can see an empty array. So let's just console.log db tax. Check our console application is running perfectly. And let's see if, and uh, let's open our 
uh, developer section of our Chrome. And once this refreshes, we should see something like an empty array. So you can see right away, we have some empty array showing us that there is no values or no data in our collection. So the way we can store data, just like I was uh, actually doing it before we needed to come back and uh, see how we can grab data, which is very good. So inside this uh, media the startup, all you just have to do is let's say if tags, so I just have to import that if does does find dot count is equals to zero. You just have to use tags dot insert. So because of the TypeScript I added, you can see automatically it's going to be recommending all those things we added on interface. I can just I say one, then I can add a title of first tags. Then I can add a created at of new date to make use of the current dates or the current timestamp and save. And when I save that, I think we need to refresh the application or let's just allow this to finish. And okay, automatically you can see we have the first stacks over there. So you can add as many stacks you want to add, which is kind of pretty cool. Maybe you want to add two or three tags, but we are not going to be adding our tags from there. We are going to be uh, adding it from our, we are going to be adding it from our main application. So I'm just going to right away replace this no DB tags with DB tags. And that solves it for that one. So instead of us uh, having something that looks a little bit ugly, I think it's time that I just paste down the CSS so that we can have something that looks really nice, just like the demo version, then we can continue. So right away, I pasted down the CSS. There is nothing much here. We just added a custom font from Google Fonts. Then we declared the classes and that's exactly the classes that we are actually using here. So one thing I forgot to do is to Organize the header. So let me just quickly do that. We're going to have an ID of header. Then inside the header, we are going to, sorry, inside the div, we are going to have a class name of flex. These are just bootstrap classes. Then we have to justify the content speed between because we want it to go to the edges of left and right. Then we have to align the items to the center so that it can be uh, horizontally aligned to the center. Then inside this div, we have a div, not a div. This is just uh, going to contain an image from React Bootstrap. So we have the image. So over here, I have the image. And I'm just going to grab that image shortly. But let me just go ahead and add a history here. Then and uh, going back to media, I can just grab this URL and I'll come inside here, source, and I just paste that, and that solves it. And let's get back to our application and give that a refresh. And this is kind of looking good, but uh, maybe still refreshing, and I think it's still refreshing. And automatically you can see we have the image and the application and that solves it for it. So that's how we can just list out everything for the list itself or for the tax. We are going to manually apply these classes uh, once, once we reach uh, over there. So let's go ahead and add, uh, come over to adding a tax. I think uh, in the next video, let's do that because I don't want these videos to really be long. So guys, thank you for watching and don't make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe button.